Hey guys, it's Ariel. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is the first video of Halloween in August. Now some of you might be saying, Saria, it's August, this is way too early for Halloween videos, but here's the thing, you guys, with crafting videos, especially if we're going to be using stuff from Dollar Tree, I really do have to show you guys like super early so that you know what you're looking for when you go shopping. So basically I'm just doing this for you guys. <laughs> so not. As Hocus Pocus is my personal favorite Halloween video, we're going to start out with a Hocus Pocus themed craft. So today's video is a two-part video because I picked up this super cute potion sign from Dollar Tree last year. Now I'm fingers crossed just praying that they bring the sign back. I do think they will because it sold out quite a bit. It was very, very popular for good reason. It is super cute as is. Honestly, like I could see tons of people just picking this up and not DIYing it because it was really, really cute. But when I saw this sign, I was instantly inspired with three different ideas for this one sign. Um, so I did end up buying two signs because, well, I'll explain that in the second video. <laughs> I bought two signs, but I do have three ideas for you. So today is going to be a Hocus Pocus inspired wreath. Be sure you guys are subscribed to my channel and ring that notification bell because I will be releasing part two to show you two more ideas of how you can use this Dollar Tree potion sign with another type of craft. Without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial. Okay guys, I have a huge bone to pick with Dollar Tree because this sign is on their website and I got so excited because I was like, good, it's gonna be there for you guys. The bad news is this sign was the normal price last year, a dollar or a dollar 25, I can't remember when the price increase was. But now they're labeling this as a bonus item, meaning it's $3 for one sign. I'm really hoping that's not the case in the store and maybe it's just that way online because this sign was so popular. But if not, I'm sorry guys, I feel very disappointed. I'm gonna move into this tutorial though. I pulled off those little potion bottles. Originally I painted this one black and I was like, that was dumb. It needs to be white. You don't necessarily have to base coat these, but if you're gonna do acrylic paint, base coating is always a good idea just because your paint will pop a lot better. So base coat all three of them white. Um, for this particular craft, I use the back of the potion bottles, but you, if you're gonna do them double-sided or double-purpose them, then you know, you can figure that out. Um, the This shape I'm doing for Winifred, and then the tall skinny bottle I'm doing for Sarah, and then the round bottle I'm doing for Mary. So I'm going to paint these to look like the witches. And not like I'm going to put their face on them. I just wanted to emulate kind of their costume and their hair. So I'm starting out with this just true green acrylic paint color and just painting it down. And then I'm taking a darker green paint color and accentuating it just by doing lines so there's nothing fancy about this you guys I'm mixing like a lime green and a dark green and just kind of swiping my brush all over the place there's no science to this and if you don't like how it looks paint over it and try again I've done that many a time if I wasn't happy with how it turned out the biggest thing that you're gonna want on this is three colors so you want a light green a medium green and a dark green and that will add some dimension to your bottle and not let it look so flat so i'm going to set winifred off to the side to dry and now i'm going to work on mary um, which by the way i base coated with chalk paint it only took about 10 minutes for that base coat to dry and now i'm moving into creating kind of a red orange color i literally mixed red and orange for mary because that is the color i think of when i think of mary and i'm just going to base coat that well i'm saying base coat again that's very confusing i base coated in white now i'm going to do a coat of this reddish orange color. I did cut my coloring off on the bottom of the ridges for both bottles because I want to add other colors on that part of the bottle. So for example here I'm going to start doing the cork of Winifred's bottle and I'm going to paint it orange to start and I'm leaving that little sliver in between the cork and the bottle because I'm going to paint that gold. So I have different shades of orange. Orange is a very difficult acrylic paint in my opinion. Like it, it's very rarely easy to do orange in one coat or get the exact orange that you're wanting. So I'm kind of taking some of Mary's burnt orange and mixing it with my lighter orange and painting over it. I wanted this to look like Winifred's hair. So I'm gonna do different shades of orange and kind of mix them in and try to get the right color. I get all of my acrylic paint from Walmart, by the way, you guys. They're about 50 cents a bottle. They're very cost effective and they last a very long time. Again, I'm gonna set Winifred off to the side and go back to Mary. And now I'm going to add some dimension to Mary by doing an orange color on top. So I am gonna try to follow the curve of the bottle. So this is more of a rounded bottle and I'm kind of trying to emulate that with my brush strokes. But 
it doesn't make that much of a difference if I'm being honest, you guys. So you probably could just do exactly what you did with the Winifred bottle for the Mary bottle. And then just giving you guys a close up to show you kind of the difference so it doesn't look so flat. It just adds a little bit of dimension. I did paint the top of Mary's cork black. I don't know why I don't have that on video, but I don't. Um, and then I'm taking this red color and I'm mixing in black as well as purple because I'm attempting to make a really dark burgundy color. Again, trying to go with Mary's color scheme. That's the color I'm going to paint between the black cork and the red orange color of the bottle. So once I have it all mixed up to the shade that I like, I'm going to go ahead and paint that between the cork and the bottle. And again, I'm just trying to go off of the witch's color schemes the best that I can. I am going to also add a purple stripe onto the cork for Mary's bottle, like the purple stripe that she has in her hair. And I just did that in kind of a zigzag pattern. This is what it looks like right before. <laughs> And if you guys notice, I'm not even cleaning off my brush. I'm just like wiping the excess on this little paper that I have and then using the same brush because who has time, right? Who has time? So now going back to the Winifred bottle, I'm going to go ahead and add the gold between the cork and the bottle. I did have to do two coats of this because this gold is very very sheer so if you don't want to do that you could always just do yellow or you could do a coat of yellow and then the gold on top I don't it just kind of depends what you prefer um, the bad part about the gold is it's not going to cover up any imperfections so if the line on the orange isn't good or if the line on the green isn't good it's very very hard to cover it up just because this gold is so sheer Okay, so next is Sarah, and the reason I haven't shown Sarah up to this point is because I was painting her at the same time, but I hated what I did. So I'm gonna make this mauve color, and I love this mauve color. It was pink, red, and purple, pretty much even numbers, like even portions of those colors, and I just mixed them together with a Q-tip. I was trying to make the color of her corset, and I was really, really, really happy with how this turned out. Um, but I had already painted Sarah's bottle half purple and I was planning on doing half mauve because I thought that that would be like her skirt and her corset but with Winifred and Mary I just really didn't love how this turned out so I decided that I wanted the entire thing to be mauve and in order to undo that I was just going to go ahead and rebase coat with white so I took my white chalk paint and just painted over the entire thing and then once I got through all of that and let it dry, I went in with that same mauve color and painted the whole bottle portion mauve. How many times can I say mauve? Now, if you guys see that, I do have the cork painted yellow already, like her hair, and then the in-between portion was red, but I am going to change that as well because she doesn't have very much red on her costume and I would rather it be purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover up that red portion with purple, but I am gonna, of course, leave the cork yellow. We are going to go back to Sarah and add some dimension just using some of that same purple. I'm going to kind of swipe up and down on the bottle and just try to add the same dimension that I did for Winnie and Sarah. Wait no, Winnie and Mary. <laughs> I didn't like how streaky this was turning out. You can't really tell, well, you can a little bit on camera, but I just took a little bit more of that mauve color on a wide brush, very little paint, and just went in and kind of um, blurred the edges of those lines and tried to harshen them. Oh, no, tried to dole down how harsh they were, <laughs> is what I am trying to say. So now I'm gonna add some dimension to the cork on Sarah, and I'm just gonna take a more golden yellow or an orangey yellow and kind of stipple that on to the cork. 
Something I do want to point out to you guys is that I was not smart. I did not paint the edges of my bottles when I first did everything. So make sure that you are painting the edges as you paint. It'll just save you time later and it does make the bottles look a lot nicer on the wreath. I am taking that same orangey yellow that I used for Sarah and also using that in Winifred's cork. I almost said hair. <laughs> After allowing my paint to dry, I'm going to be using these labels. I will have these linked in the description box below for you guys. If you guys have been with my channel for a while, you know I actually already used these labels when I created potion bottles for Hocus Pocus years ago. So I'm just going to use the same ones because I like how they look. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. I just went with the ones that I thought matched the witch's bottle. So um, I'm doing the Newt Saliva one on Winifred and I'm adding a pretty healthy layer of Mod Podge and then just firmly pressing down my label. Winifred, unfortunately, I didn't do a super great job with because I did get a bubble underneath. I didn't do a good job of making sure it was smoothed down before doing this top coat of Mod Podge. So just make sure when you first lay down the label that you take your finger and really smooth over, make sure you've got no bubbles, then go in and do that top coat. So here I'm going to take my time a little bit more with Sarah, really smooth it down with my finger, then go in and do the top coat of Mod Podge. I'm going to do the exact same thing with Mary, and then I will tell you guys, I did three coats of Mod Podge just in case I decide to put this wreath outside. I probably won't because I really like the flowers on it and I don't think they're made for being outside. Um, but I did do three coats just in case. Now I have these teeny tiny little black clothes pins. Any clothes pin will work and they do sell clothes pins at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to hot glue these onto the potion bottles. This will allow me to move the potion bottles where I like them in the wreath instead of just gluing them down. I did want to point out, you guys, I used the spider venom bottle for Sarah and that made me really happy when I realized it. I just, I really liked it. <laughs> So once I have those all hot glued down and dried, I'm just going to set those off to the side and start with my actual wreath. So I'm using, I believe this is called a grapevine wreath. I got it from Michael's and I got it 40% off. It was a great deal. I believe I paid $6.99 for it. So it was a really good deal. And then I picked up a ton of fall flowers from Dollar Tree. I love Dollar Tree's florals, especially their fall florals. They just make me happy. They're so beautiful. I got marigolds and velvet pumpkin picks and those little fall berries. Uh, I got like some mauve colored flowers with burnt edges, some really pretty purple flowers, these really cool purple spindly looking ones, some leaves. I really tried to go with the witch's color scheme here, so I tried to get a lot of purple and green and orange and even a little bit of pink. The hardest part was definitely incorporating the green. So I had this greenery thing on hand already and I did take a few pieces of this and stick it in um, just to try to incorporate more colors from Winifred, but it's really hard to do that with fall colors. I didn't film like actually laying out the flowers because honestly, I, I don't think I need to. Um, you guys probably won't necessarily do all the exact same flowers that I did, but just lay it out how you like it. Originally, I only covered half the wreath because I planned on this being the side of the wreath, but this ended up actually being the bottom of the wreath. Either way, it looked really pretty. And then once I had all of the flowers laid out, then I go in and hot glue. So I always lay out the entire wreath first, then start hot gluing just to make sure I have everything that I need before everything gets permanently attached. So now I'm going in with the bottles and I'm just kind of playing with them and seeing how I like them. Again, originally they were going to face up this way because this was the side of the wreath, but I did change that. And now we're going to get to the top portion of the sign. So I actually think you could use this as is. It says pick your poison. I think it works, um, but I do decide to paint mine. I played with the idea of adding these little witch's brooms that I tied different ribbon ribbons on to represent each, each witch. I cannot talk. Um, but I didn't end up using those brooms, so don't feel like you need to pick them up unless you want to use them for another craft. Um, but then I cut this out on my silhouette, and they have tons of these on Etsy, like Sanderson Sister Apothecary sign type things. Um, I weeded all of that and cut all of that so you guys don't have to watch me do it. And then I took some transfer paper, and I'm just going to pick this up, and this is going to be a stencil. So I'm not laying down vinyl on this sign to be permanent. I'm laying it down so that I can actually paint the sign. Now, unfortunately, I laid my sign a little bit too high up. No, that doesn't make sense. I laid my stencil a little bit too high up on my sign. I'm really struggling with this transfer tape. This is so sad. 
Okay, so here I'm laying down the stencil on my sign and it's a little bit too high. I thought I had it perfectly placed and it wasn't until after I painted the entire thing that I realized it was not perfect. Also, I'm going to point out to you guys, I actually already did this one time with a different template and I really didn't like it. So I repainted the entire thing in black chalk paint and this is attempt number two. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because I was impatient. I did not give my chalk paint plenty of time to dry. I gave it like maybe 10 minutes and then I just went right in with the stencil. So it is going to pull up quite a bit of the paint. I do fix it, but I just wanted to tell you guys that because you should just be patient. <laughs> So once I have this all laid down, I'm going to go ahead and paint it. Um, I did do an ombre effect on this and I really liked how it turned out. So for the little cauldron on the bottom, I painted that part purple. And then for the actual potion and the smoke coming out of the potion, I'm going to do a lime green color. And then on the lettering, it's kind of a mixture of different colors. But as you can see, again, I'm trying to stick to the color scheme of those witches. So I've got green, purple, and a reddish orange. I did the smaller words in that reddish orange color and then the words hocus pocus I'm actually going to do in a mixture of pink and purple because I think it gives it kind of that magical vibe and I'm going to start by laying down purple on the end <laughs> and the beginning of the word I don't know why I'm having so much trouble explaining things then I'm going to take that pink and purple and mix it together and I'm going to do the middle portion in a mixture of pink and purple. And then I'm gonna kind of move toward the side and blend those colors together. This creates kind of an ombre effect. It turned out really, really pretty. I actually ended up using this on another project that you guys are gonna see in the future. And then because I liked this so much, I also am going to ombre the green color as well in a little bit, which I'll show you. But before I do that, there's more like little teeny tiny words up above the hocus pocus part so I'm gonna do that in orange as well and then I grabbed a darker green and I'm going to ombre the green color with a light and a dark green as well If you guys are nervous about this part, my advice is just to get out a piece of paper and just practice mixing those colors together. It's it's pretty user friendly, like it's not super difficult to do. I just kind of did this on a whim and I really liked how it turned out. So after allowing your acrylic paint to dry, which I also was impatient and did not necessarily do, um, <laughs> you, you go ahead and weed off your stencil. But you guys, just be patient. Just let the paint dry. Give it 30 minutes just to make sure that you don't mess up your sign because I was really just trying to get this video done, but in hindsight, it probably took me longer to fix my mistakes than if I had just waited for the paint to dry. So this is what it looks like. Not bad from afar, but up close, she's rough. <laughs> now, some might say, Saria, that's nice. It's got a nice weathered look to it. And to those, I would say, thank you for your encouragement. <laughs> But I am going to go ahead and take my black chalk paint and try to kind of clean it up as best I can. Unfortunately, I lost the string that came with this sign to hang it. So I just pulled out some of my own jute twine to make my own hanger for it. But I did like the one that came with it. It's, it was nice. Um, and then I'm just tying a double knot in the back. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hang this on my wreath. And that's it, that's the entire tutorial. I know that the painting looks like it takes a while, but honestly, you guys, I had so much fun painting those little bottles. I would have had more fun painting the sign if I hadn't messed it up. So patience is key. But this came out so pretty, and I love that it's a nod to Hocus Pocus, even, I was about to say, even though it doesn't scream Hocus Pocus, but it literally says Hocus Pocus. Whatever, I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what would you have done differently. Would you have done the potions from the movie or would you have done something else with the bottles? Would you have painted them inspired by the sisters or done it in a different way? I love chatting Hocus Pocus. I love chatting with you guys, period, but I love chatting Hocus Pocus with you guys. And how excited are you for the sequel? Are you? Are you dreading it? Do you think they're going to ruin it? I don't think they're going to ruin it. I think it's going to be good. I have faith. I have faith. 
On that note, I'm going to close out this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for part two.